Some gifts are timeless, they endure. Some gifts are what one desperately needs. Gifts must be received with joy. Jesus Christ is God's present perfect. Find out why. You know, Christmas is a time when we enjoy gift giving. We give presents, we receive gifts or presents, and uh, you know, a lot of thought, uh, at least for many of us, when we think about giving gifts, we do put a lot of thought into that. You know, you don't just pick a random gift and give it to somebody and hope it, you know, hope they like it. You try to put some thought into it. And uh, usually a well thought out gift addresses a specific need in somebody's life. You know, it means something. You, you give it for a reason. You want to address a need that you've observed or seen in their lives, and so you give them that gift. And uh, all of us, I think, we, we like to see how our gift is received, whether the person receiving our gift really enjoys it. And, and we actually receive pleasure when they are happy. You know, when they enjoy the gift and they're delighted and they feel that that gift has really meant something to them, uh, it makes us, the giver of the gift or the present, makes us happy. And uh, those of us who received gifts, we realize that some gifts are actually timeless. In fact, the wristwatch that I'm wearing is at least 15 years old. Perhaps 20, I don't remember. Somewhere that time, it was given to me a really long time ago by my dad. And I've had no need to change it. I mean, it tells the time pretty well, you know. And I know, you know, there are you know, these smart watches. And you, you know, nowadays you get these high-tech watches that do a lot of things. But I'm so happy with this watch that I received maybe 20 years ago. I'm still using it. No need to change it. It serves the purpose. And so some gifts are literally timeless. I mean, they just endure through time. And the, the recipient of that gift just enjoys it over time. And I also want, to think, want us to think about this, that, you know, there are some presents we give, some gifts we give that are actually what somebody desperately needs at that moment. I mean, just imagine a student who needs money to pay their tuition fees uh, in, in, in school or college. And, and, you know, you can give them a big box of chocolates, they'll enjoy it. You can give them some clothes, they'll enjoy it, but something that they desperately need is that money to pay their tuition in college. And so there are those, those gifts, which you could probably call priceless, something that the recipient desperately needs at that juncture in their lives. They just need that. And if somebody steps in and gives that to them as a gift, it becomes so memorable. Something etched in their minds, in their memories, that, you know, years later, they'll still be talking about that. Hey, that time in my life when I desperately needed somebody to help me with paying my tuition, I received a gift. And that took care of something in my life. So there are those presents that we give people, which, which is a desperate need in their lives, and it's, it becomes so memorable. It becomes, uh, it makes them feel really cared for. Uh, it just gives them a sense of being complete. Uh, they, 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 the void is, is, is filled. They feel satisfied uh, at least at that point in their lives. I want to just take a few moments this morning to talk to us about this gift, this present that God has given to us. Every Christmas when we come together and regardless, you know, whether this is the right time of the year to celebrate Christmas or, you know, whether it's the actual time that Jesus was born, that's besides the point, I think. But the fact that we pause to remember that God gave this gift to us, this present to us, and that we are thankful, we celebrate, we are grateful. But what I want to bring our attention to is this, that the present or the gift that God gave to us in Jesus Christ is eternal, is priceless. It's a, it's a present or a gift that we actually need. 
When the angels announced the birth of Jesus, and I'll just quote a few verses from the Bible. Uh, in the Gospel of Luke, it's recorded for us there that the angels said to these shepherds that you, uh, uh, don't be afraid. Behold, I'm bringing you good news of great joy, which is for all people. It's, it's for everybody all over the world and through time. And what is this news? There is born this day in the city of David a Savior. That's good news. God's gift, God's present, God presented the world with a Savior. Say, guys, I'm going to give you a gift, a Savior. He presented the world. He presented you and me, a Savior. Now, in another place, one of the closest disciples of Jesus, his name was John. He, he wrote in 1 John, in one of his epistles, he said, We have seen and we testify, we affirm this, that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Once, once again, reiterating the fact that this present, God's present, God's gift to the world was a Savior. Now, some of us may say, you know, this gift is 2,000 years old. It's much older than your watch, Ashes. Whole lot older than the wristwatch you're wearing. 2,000 years old. Is it still relevant? Times have changed. The way we think, the way we live life, and, you know, the, 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 the way we go about life has changed. We've made tremendous advances terms of science and technology and knowledge and, and so on, is that gift still relevant to us 2,000 years later? And I want to just bring our attention to a few thoughts. Simple. You know, time has gone by. True, 2,000 years have elapsed, but people have not changed. Who you and I are, people have not changed from then until now. And unfortunately, it's the negatives that have not changed. The Bible tells us in, a, in, in the very first book, it says, God saw after he created man, he, got, he saw man, and he saw that the wickedness of man was great. And every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Looked, looked upon man and he saw how wicked man had become. And this is so true that though time has elapsed, People have not changed. You and I, people struggle with this thing called wickedness, this thing called sin in our lives. This has not changed. We may have grown intellectually in knowledge and in, in, in science, technology, and all the other things, but people are still wicked, are still struggling with this thing called sin or wickedness, with evil in our lives. We still struggle with it. We have hatred, we have jealousy, we have bitterness, we have wrong kinds of competition. We want to outdo the other person. Uh, uh, we can, we, we, when our closest friend succeeds, we become jealous and so on. At the very core of our nature, if we are honest with ourselves, we all struggle with this thing called sin, with this thing called wickedness. People haven't changed. And secondly, though times have changed our needs have not changed. Our core needs have not changed. Although we have different things that address needs, at the very core, every person has certain needs. If you haven't realized it, hopefully at the end of, by the, before the, I finish talking this morning, you and I will realize that all of us need a savior. All of us need a relationship with God. And all of us need purpose and meaning in life. Mom and dad can tell you, become a doctor, become a lawyer, become an engineer. So you study hard, you become one. And you're saying, okay, I've become. What's the meaning? What's the purpose? Why am I here? So education doesn't necessarily address these deeper questions, the core questions that you and I 
struggle with. What's the meaning? Why am I here? What's the purpose? So all of us, our needs haven't changed over time. We still need a savior, somebody to rescue us from sin, from ourselves, from our wickedness. Somebody who can connect us with almighty God and, and give us a relationship with God. Somebody who can bring meaning and purpose and sense to the life that we're living. Our core needs still exist and they haven't changed over time. So what I want to bring to your attention is this way, that when God sent the Savior, that present, that gift is still perfect today. Present, perfect. A gift that transcends time. A gift whose, a gift whose value, a present whose value has not changed over time. And the reason is this, that the Bible tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever. Who he is and what he came to be for mankind, for people, has not changed with time. 2,000 years ago, he was given to the world as that one complete gift that God would give to man, the Savior. 2,000 years later, he is still the same, very competent and more than competent to meet every need that you and I may have in our lives. I want to just share a few descriptors that Jesus used for himself. There, was, there are several in the Bible. I've just picked out a handful for this morning. Just listen to these. Things that Jesus used to describe himself and how we came to address needs in our lives. He said things like this. He said, I am the bread of life. Bread satisfies hunger. Jesus is that bread that really satisfies us. He said, I am the light of the world. Light dispels darkness. Light shows us the way in which to walk. Jesus is still that. He dispels darkness out of our lives and gives us light, the direction in which to go. Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. You and I are like sheep waiting, looking for that door. Door leads us into the next phase. It helps us exit and enter. It's the point of entry into God's kingdom. You and I are looking for an entrance into the kingdom of God. Jesus says, I am the door. Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Water quenches thirst. Jesus said, I am that water of life. I am the one who quenches that thirst. And if you drink of the water I give, you will never thirst again. Jesus said, my peace I give you. We are all looking for peace. Something that transcends uh, just human uh, uh, reasoning that try to uh, console us in difficult times. Something that surmounts the storms we face. Jesus said, I am that peace. My peace I give you. He is the Prince of Peace and he still is that peace for you and me today. Jesus said, come to me all weary and I will give you rest. He is still the rest giver. Some of us are so overwhelmed. Our problems weigh us down. We are in turmoil. Jesus said, I am that rest. I will give you rest. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. We are looking for direction. We are looking for answers. We are looking for meaning. Jesus says, I am that. The way, the truth, the life. Jesus said, I am the true wine. True wine representing vitality and fruitfulness. For some of us, we need that. We are saying, God, I, I want something fruitful, meaningful in my life. Jesus said, I am the true wine. Jesus said, I am he who lives, who was dead. I'm alive forevermore and I have the keys of hell and death. He stands as conqueror. Conqueror over death. Conquer over hell. That means the powers of darkness. For some of us, we want to know that the life beyond this life is secure. Some of us don't even bother to think of it. But there will come a time for all of us when we pause and we say, you know, if there ever is a life after this life, I want to make sure I'm secure. And Jesus is the only one who says, I was dead. I'm alive. I'm standing as conqueror. I can secure your eternity. I've conquered hell. I've conquered the powers of darkness. I've conquered what oppresses you. I am the great deliverer. I am the great liberator because I have personally conquered hell is what Jesus says. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I've gone through this and I have the ability to give you eternal life. Life beyond this life. He is the only one who can secure your eternity. The only one who guarantees that, guarantees that kind of life. Because he said, I am the resurrection and the life. 
Jesus said, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. And he still remains that, meaning I am the center of everything. I am the reason for everything. Everything revolves around me. That's a huge claim. And only God could make such a claim. And I close with this descriptor he used. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Meaning, I was always there. God eternal, creator. So this Savior who came into this world as God's perfect present, present perfect, he is still present perfect in our lives. He's still there to bring what he came to be. I want us to understand that you and I need him. This is one gift that addresses a desperate need in our lives. There are some gifts you and I receive, say, thank you very much, I can leave it aside. But there are some gifts you cannot afford not receiving. You and I need the gift of a Savior. You know, when we need help with learning, we go to a teacher. When we need help with our bodies, we go to a doctor. When we need help with our money, we go to a banker. Hey. Who do you go to when you need help with your soul? Who do you go to when you need help with your sin, with your wickedness? Who do you go to when you need meaning and purpose in life? Who do you go to when you want to secure your eternity, your life after this life? Who do you go to when you need a real relationship with God? You and I go to the Savior. Jesus Christ. So will you receive God's perfect gift, God's perfect present this morning? The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned. All of us. And you and I will readily acknowledge that. Our sin makes us lacking before a holy God. God is so holy that even one sin is sufficient to keep us away from his perfect presence. One sin. And the Bible tells us that the wages of sin or the consequence, the result of sin is death, which is eternal separation from God in hell. I want you to understand that you and I, because innately we are born sinners and we have committed so much sin and wickedness, the only thing you and I deserve is hell, which is separation from God eternally. You not believing in it will not make it go away. There is a heaven and there is a hell. The Bible tells us so clearly. And unfortunately, our sins are taking us there. The result of sin is death. But the gift of God, the present God is giving to each one of us this morning, is eternal life through the Savior, Jesus Christ. And receiving it is very simple. The Bible says that whoever, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The Savior comes to save. If you call on the name of the Lord, you will experience what he has come to do to save you and me. This morning, God's present, timeless gift is the Savior, Jesus Christ. You need a Savior. You and I need somebody who will rescue us from sin, who will bring us into a relationship with God, who will give us life, meaning, and purpose, and who will secure our eternity. The Savior does that. You and I need somebody who will set us free from all the oppression that we face will be the bread of life, who will be the light of life, who will be the water of life, who will be the comfort, who will be the rest for us. Jesus Christ came to be that for you and me. Anyone who calls upon him will be saved. The question I want to ask you this morning, if you've never done it in your life before, is would you do that right now? Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross. He paid the penalty of our sins so that anyone who believes in him could be forgiven. 
He was buried, and three days later, he rose up again. And the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they will be saved. This morning, you can receive God's present to you, the Savior. Could we bow our heads in a moment of prayer, please? And if there's anyone here this morning, you've never in your life, Received God's presence, the Savior. And you never believed in Jesus Christ to be your Savior. If you've never done that, and I want to lead you in a simple prayer. It's not the prayer that saves you. It's Jesus who saves you. This prayer is only to help you connect with the Savior. It's only to help you say, Jesus, I want you in my life. I want you to be my Savior. I want you to save me from my sin. I want you to bring me into a relationship with God. And I want you to be the life, the way, the truth for me. If you've never done this before in your life, and this morning you would like to do that, I invite you to pray this prayer with me right where you are. Could you just say this with me? Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I'm in need of a Savior. You came to be my Savior. Come into my life. Forgive my sins. And help me to follow you the rest of my life. Thank you for doing this. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.